The prayer, prayer leader also is in charge of emailing them to everybody. Okay? Yes. What what view does the Baptist Association have on women leader women teachers for adult classes? Uh, we don't have a, a policy on that. That that is at every church's uh, uh, discretion. Uh, is she a good teacher? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if she's a good teacher, let her we're, teach. we're inviting. We're thinking about inviting. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. That is a, our churches are autonomous. That means we stand alone, we make our own decisions. There's no, nothing from the association head down that says, well, I don't think ladies ought to, ought to speak at church, you know. No. That's every church's uh, decision. And I don't have a problem with that at all. <laughs> here's what usually happens. Here's, usually, here's, here's what most churches do. I, I would say what most churches do. Uh, ladies teaching ladies, no issue. Ladies teaching couples classes uh, usually is no issue because there's women there. Uh, but if there is a little bit of an issue, you just ask the pastor, say, hey, is it okay for Vivian? Yeah. Is it okay for Vivian to teach a couples class? <laughs> yeah, man, she's awesome. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, but the pastor... Somebody may say, hey, well, well, what about Sally? And the pastor may know that Sally's really going through a tough time family-wise, and she just got let go of her work. But nobody else in church knows that. The pastor may say, well, let's, let's wait a little bit. I, she's going through some struggles right now. We need this kind of prayer for her. The pastor usually know, knows those things, and, uh, and it's good to just to honor him and say, hey, pastor, what do you think? And... Uh, you know, that kind of thing. That's, that's what most churches do. But there is no head down thing from the association like the Methodist Church and other churches. Yeah. Good question. Uh, but your students get to know their needs, their hurts, their heartaches. I promise you, if you're somebody in your class who has a need, they've been to the hospital, and nobody calls them, nobody checks on them, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be a while before they come back to that Sunday school class. Yeah. Especially if she knows that even one person in that class knows about it. Okay? So it's a, this, is, this right here is very important that you follow up with those needs. And these young classes where they have babies and stuff, man, you need to take them casseroles for about three or four or five days after you get home with the baby. You need to love on them, care about them, make sure things are ready in the preschool. Folks, preschool and children's ministry is the most important ministry in the church right now outside of the pulpit. Okay? Did you hear that? Preschool and children's ministry are the most important ministries in the church outside of the preaching of God's Word from the pulpit. Okay? So look at those areas. Look at those areas. I stuck my head in the preschools this morning. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. just, just, just think about that. Just think about that, okay? All right, pray over the students. The Sunday school role is not an attendance sheet, but it's a prayer list. Sunday school attendance sheet is not... Uh, Sunday school role is not an attendance sheet. It's a prayer list. So pray over those folks every week. Teachers, pray over those people in your class. Alright, look at here. Isn't this funny? Got a deer running around here and he's falling asleep. There's a deer coming up eating his lunch. If you're not a deer hunter, you probably don't find that very amusing anyway. Uh, teaching hints. Just some teaching hints, okay? One, teach one main idea. Hunt with a rifle, not a shotgun. One main idea as you teach. Uh, now here today, it's a little different conference setting. The main idea is that I want to help you have an awesome Sunday school class, a healthy Sunday school class. But I'm giving you, I'm giving you several different thoughts related to that, okay? All right. Number two, ask questions. Do you think I should ask Yes or no questions? No. 
I just did. <laughs> How much discussion did I get from it? None. None. Okay. How should I go about asking questions? Make it personal. Make it personal to the individual you're asking. Okay. All right. Yeah. Ask questions that begin with who, what, why, where, when, and how. Start the question with a W. And then, of course, the last one's an H, but that's okay. Who, blah, 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 what, why, why is a great question. Why is a great question? Because you're asking them to kind of think a little bit, that kind of deal. Uh, where, when is a little more detailed or specific question. But the how, how in the world did Moses take care of those 20,000 people, whatever, how many it was? He divided them, he organized them, he got his brothers, his son-in-laws down. Ask who, what, why, where, when, and how questions. Okay? Most of our questions really are yes and no. And, uh, and it stops right there. Okay, now three. It's more important to teach people than to cover the material. Okay? You may say, well, hey, man, we didn't get through the lesson today. Well, you probably did. You probably did, especially if somebody began to ask a question or two about the Scripture, about practical things, about their own life. Uh, you probably did... Uh, teach a good lesson, but you may not have gotten through all of these scriptures. <coughs> That's okay. We're teaching people uh, not so much to cover the material. Okay, make it fun. Somehow. Somehow make it fun. Tell a funny story. Uh, you know, just, just get people involved. Uh, but somehow make it fun. The pastor told a couple of funny stories today in his, in his sermon. You think he did that on purpose? You bet he did. <laughs> you bet he did. You know, he wanted to make his sermon a little more interesting, so he told a funny story. And teachers, we need to do the same thing. Even if it's something uh, about our grandkids or our kids or whatever. You know, just make it fun. And to make sure that people are still awake. <laughs> <laughs> and you tell a funny story to keep them away. <laughs> Uh, teach to change lives. That's our goal is to teach to change lives. As you see people growing in your class, that, that makes a big difference. Okay. Okay. Teaching methods. Uh-oh. You got to step on some toes now. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, what is the best teaching method that, that we have for Sunday school? Teaching. No, I'm talking about methods, like lecture, like question answer, like uh, discussion. group study, discussion, like uh, even drama. Uh, Hands-on crafts. Uh, what? Hands-on crafts that apply to the lesson. Hands-on crafts. Yeah, the senior adult men would love that. <laughs> 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 they might. I don't know. <laughs> what do you teach? Sunday school. First, um, Sunday school kids. What, what, what age? First grade all the way up to six. First through six. So she's teaching art. You know, crafts, you know, to apply. And that's awesome. That's what you want. That's what we're going to get to a deal here a while ago in a minute that 90, you, you remember 90% of what you do. Mm -hmm. The kids are doing the craft, and so they will remember that biblical principle. Okay? Yeah. Okay, what's the most and best method? Well, the poorest method is the one that we use over and over and over and over and over. Okay? That's the poorest. Because there's three or four really good different teaching methods. Uh, people remember 20% of what they hear. That's just, you know, from somebody up here talking. You notice I use uh, uh, the board here. 50% of what they see and hear. People will remember that. Then, as I said to Miss Iwana over here, 90% of what they see, hear, and do. 
90% of what they see, hear, and do. And you guys think, well, how in the world am I going to get this couples class to do something? Well, it's a little tough. It's a little tough. But a couple times a year, you have some type of mission project. Uh, our Sunday school class, once a year, we'll go down to the Union City Mission and Serve Sandwiches on, on uh, Saturday night. And it's awesome. We go down there, we share the gospel, we preach, we sing. We'll make 200 sandwiches, we'll give them away. We love on those guys. And uh, that's the doing. That's the doing. You don't have to do something every Sunday, but for sure you can do it. The uh, people, 50% of what they see and hear, see by doing something like this or having something on the board, you know, that kind of deal. Okay? Does that make sense? Teacher, am I right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, connect. Okay. Take care of the teacher. The teacher always learns the most. Anybody flown on an airplane lately? Lately. Need a lady. Late. Got a lady. Everybody's ducking her head now. They want to volunteer. Lately, like a how late? How lately, okay. <laughs> like uh, last two or three or four months, six months, anyway? Yeah, Christmas. Christmas? Well, come here and help me. Come here and help me. What's your name? Betty. Miss Betty. Let's give Miss Betty a hand, would you? Yeah. Miss Betty, come up here. All right, okay. You got on the plane. You sat down in your chair. And, uh, no, you stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, a, a flight attendant came up there and started giving you instructions, right? Do yeah. you remember what the flight attendant said about whenever uh, the oxygen mask got yeah. ready? Tell, kind of tell them what, what they say now. Uh, she said, Speak up, well, they can hear you. She said if uh, the oxygen uh, uh, kits drop down, uh, put on the mask yourself first. Be for you help your family or kids or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Right. What, why do they think you would put it on your self first? That sounds a little selfish, doesn't it? Well, <coughs> if you won't pass out yourself, you cannot have nobody. That's, That's right. Give her a hand. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Miss Betty. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Flight attendant. She said, oxygen mask going to drop down. Put it on yourself first, and then put one on your kid, or your husband, or whoever, you know, whoever's around you. <laughs> okay? Take care of the teacher. The teacher always learns the most, folks. Seriously, Sunday school teacher, you're the most important person in that room. Okay? You're the most important person in that room. And, and in James, it talks about a teacher kind of having a higher level of accountability. Okay? Teaching God's Word is very serious. It's a calling. You know, when I would enlist Sunday school teachers uh, as, a, as a pastor, uh, I didn't ask them to serve for a year. I didn't ask them to serve for a year. I ask them to pray about it and see if this is something God is leading them to do. Okay? And if they feel like this is something God's leading them to do, then I don't have to worry about them dropping out at the end of six months or a year. Okay? And if they feel like this is something God's calling them to do, then uh, this right here will be uh, part of that calling. In that, uh, you know, that it makes a difference. Any thoughts on that right there? Any thoughts? What do you mean by take care of the teacher? Take care of the teacher spiritually. spiritually. Your own spiritual walk with God. If you are teaching out of your heart and what you are experiencing in your daily walk with the Lord, then that's going to flow into your class and into your teaching. If you're out here doing some junk that you shouldn't be doing, 
and you know that you're not right with God and yet you're still trying to teach, uh, guess what? You're going to be teaching out of your head, head knowledge, mm -hmm. and not your heart knowledge, not out of your own experience. Right. Okay? So I just want to challenge you, one, to uh, know <laughs> definitely for sure that you do have a vibrant relationship with Christ and that you're walking with Lord. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. No, hey, I'm not, not that at all. But uh, if you do stumble, if you do say something, if you do goof up, then you're, you're quick to confess that. You're quick to make things right with somebody. You're quick to uh, take care of yourself spiritually and live in the Lord, okay? And I've always found, and I don't want to scare anybody, but uh, there's probably a little bit more spiritual warfare goes on with a Sunday school teacher and a pastor, a minister, than uh, somebody maybe that just uh, shows up in your Sunday school class. Spiritual warfare may be a little more intense because uh, of, guess what? Satan can derail a pastor or derail a, 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 a Sunday school teacher that's been really faithful for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They can, Satan can mess up a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. So I just want to challenge you to uh, have that right relationship with Christ. Take care of yourself spiritually. Uh, develop a leadership team. Those around you determine the success of the leader. Develop a leadership team. If you're trying to do everything yourself in your Sunday school class, no. No, don't do that. Please. Develop people around you to help you. And uh, there's a sheet. Uh, hold that sheet up there. Looks like a soccer ball there on top, on the bottom. That sheet right there shows you the different uh, people that you can have on your leadership team in your class. You don't have to have them all, but uh, look at the bottom uh, graphic versus the top. The bottom graphic talk, is, is a team-oriented <coughs> approach versus the top-down military approach. Uh, this is more of a team where you've got a uh, teaching team, you've got a sharing team, you've got a caring team. And uh, these people right there, we're going to go over those in just a second. Anyway, everybody should have that. And uh, a couple of people for sure you need a leadership team is you need an assistant teacher, you need a prayer teacher, and you need a party person. Okay? Those are first line. First line people. Okay, team members. Class president. They're the leader of the class, and the class president, along with the teacher, helps enlist the leadership team, okay? The teachers are excited about teaching people God's Word. Assist the teacher, assist the teacher, training to become a teacher. Again, I want to challenge you to get that assistant teacher for your class, okay? Work on that. Uh, a secretary. This is somebody who does a whole lot more than just checks the roll, okay? They are an information specialist. Did you get that? Where's my, where's my computer text piece? Information specialist. Okay. All right. Uh, they watch attendance patterns. They notice if somebody hadn't been there in two or three or four weeks. Make sure there's a card sent. But the... A secretary is a whole lot more than just a person that checks roll and takes it to the Sunday school office, okay? But they watch those attendance patterns in the class. Uh, care group leaders, if you have a larger class of 15 or 20, you need some care group leaders. These people connect with guests and members each week. You need about four or five people in each care group or four or five couples. Uh, these are care group leaders. And they just call these people in their group about once a month, check on them, tell them about the party. The idea is for this caregiver <coughs> to build a relationship, not to bug them. Okay? You don't bug your people. You try to build a relationship with them. And come back and say, hey, yeah, I've been in the hospital. You know, I had my heart was racing at 180 beats a minute, and I didn't know what was going on, but I'm okay now. I've got on some medication. And, and well, we didn't know about that. Well, I went in there so fast I didn't get a chance to call anybody. 
care group leader immediately calls the teacher, say, hey, you know, Susie's been at Baptist and uh, the heart was ra ra raising at 180 beats a minute. Mm. No, I didn't know about that. Immediately the teacher calls a lady. And immediately a bond. And you take care of the needs, okay? Take care of the needs. Care group leaders can help us with that. Got a party person. Get everybody involved in the party. Everybody bring something. Prayer leader. Prayer leader leads the prayer time at the end of the class. Uh, and also sends an email to everybody in the class every week about the prayer request. Okay. And what will happen? What's happened in our class in Millington? Send that, that email out every week. You usually get it on Sunday afternoon, really. If not for sure on Monday morning. Something happens during the week. Something happens during the week. Howard broke his leg out back. He was planting a bush for his wife and he broke his leg. Had to go to the doctor. Immediately Linda, my wife, this really happened about 10 years ago. <laughs> she she gets on the Sunday school email deal, say pray for Howard, he broke his leg. And, and pray for me more because I got to take care of him, <laughs> you know. And uh, but again, that comes across the prayer email list on a Thursday morning, middle of the week. And I show up Sunday morning on crutches. Everybody feels sorry for me and all that kind of stuff. But people bring me casseroles on Friday and Saturday <laughs> because I broke my leg. Okay. That's one of the neat things that happens whenever you email that on Sunday afternoon or Monday. Is that people in your class can plug in and say, hey, pray for me. <coughs> uh, whatever. My grandkids in the hospital with 105 temperature. Okay? Okay, what happens during the week many times is more important than what happens on Sunday. Now wait a minute, Howard, you've been talking about preaching, the, I mean, teaching the Word, you know, on Sunday morning, and how to keep it interesting, and then, you know, and then all of a sudden you say, hey, what happens during the week's more important than what happens on Sunday? Are you kidding me? Why is this a true statement or not? Because you want to see what it means learned during Sunday to apply it during the week. Good thought. Great thought. Yeah. More things happen during the week than they do on one Sunday. Exactly. <laughs> Howard breaks his leg on Thursday morning. <laughs> yeah. Grandkid goes into the hospital Friday night with 105. Yeah. Yeah. And if as a Sunday school class, a Sunday school teacher, we don't respond to those things that happen during the week, um, then our Sunday school class is not what it should be. But a lot of times, and I love what you said right here, you know, that the living out of the lesson, of the truth, of the principles during the week is so, so important. So, so important. That's what's important about what happens during the week is as we live out those truths, principles of God's Word. Okay. What do we got here? What kind of picture is that? Looks like somebody's helping rebuild or paint somebody's house. Yeah. Habitat? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Who, what? 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 Habitat for a man. Who said it? Alan. Alan. You're a man. <laughs> <laughs> this is Habitat in East Kentucky. East Kentucky. We're actually working on a Habitat house. Uh, family mission trip. Uh, well, you talk about connecting. You go on a mission trip with about 10 or 12, 15 people. You come back with a deeper level of friendship. You come back really close friends. Some of my dearest friends are people I've been on mission trips with. Absolutely. You connect. Connect. But you can do that also in a Sunday school class. You know, <coughs> with projects. Work day, those kids that cleaned the church the other day. I guarantee you they... May not have liked it, but uh, they they got close. <laughs> they did. And they, they did like it. They, they it. Yeah. Okay. Encourage your groups to minister, to be involved in ministry. Do something. Uh, the the thing coming up, Pastor, help me out with a food deal or 
faith in action. See, that's awesome. Your Sunday school class needs to get together, hop all over that, do something together in Sunday school class, yeah. Uh, those in ministry, I'm talking about in, involved in these kinds of things, you list folks that are not, have never, never been on a mission project, never been on a mission trip, get them involved. Uh, it'll, it'll help change their life. The goal is not to work, do the work of 10 people, but to get 10 people to do the work. In a ministry project, the goal is not for you to do the work of 10 people, but for you to get 10 people to help you. Okay? You got that? Help the people take ownership of the mission project or the ministry that you're doing. The idea is that people don't wash rental cars. <laughs> Anybody ever here rented a car and then washed it before you turned it back in? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> you changed the oil? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I left the bar my car. <laughs> okay. Reproduce your class. Reproduce your class. We're not talking about uh, a class that's attending 10 and all of a sudden then you want to have 20 in your class, but you're talking about the idea of your class starting a, another class. And uh, that's how you really grow churches and grow Sunday schools, is by having the mentality of, uh, hey, a year from now, we'd love to start another Bible study group. And let's keep, pray about that. Let's think about that. Maybe even as you as the lead teacher, you've got a co-teacher along with you, the lead teacher might step out and start the new class and let the co-teacher continue on with the established <coughs> class. That's just a thought. Okay. Birth a new class with three or four couples from the mother class. The teacher of the mother class goes to the new class and the assistant teacher stays with the original mother class. Okay? It takes a lot to do that. It takes a lot to step out and say, hey, I'm going to start a new class. I need two couples to help me. Just two, not seven. <laughs> okay. Could you go back really quickly to the slide? I need the last minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any any comments or questions on this right here? Because this is kind of cutting edge kind of stuff. And the concept <coughs> is this, folks. <coughs> if you always do what you've always done, you'll always got, get what you've always got. You people in, in the work world know this. You've heard it said to you a hundred times. You always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. In growing churches, you gotta do some new things, some different things. Starting new classes is a new thing, a new thing to think about. Okay, Pastor. What would be some effective ways to recruit new teachers? Because very often you find somebody, hey, come come on board and have have me to share the teaching load. Is like scare people away, especially if they <coughs> haven't done similar teaching before. Uh, I would do kind of like what I shared a little bit about, and that is the person that is the lead teacher. You enlist somebody in your class to be your assistant teacher. I mean, do that. Then come on teach uh, once every six weeks, whatever, and let them kind of get their feet wet. Let you, as the lead teacher, model how to teach. And 
and then a year, 18 months, let that assistant teacher uh, become a full-time teacher. Uh, that's one way. That's usually the best way because you are training that teacher. Uh, again, I've challenged you from the beginning here today to, to get that assistant teacher, folks. Whether you're teaching first graders or you're teaching senior adult men and women, find somebody that uh, that can be your assistant teacher, and uh, you don't want to tell them right off the bat, "Well, I want you to start a new class, or I'm going to start a new class 18 months from now." That may not happen, but it may be that you can step out of your class and they can take over, and you need that person anyway. You just do. You need an assistant teacher because uh, you ain't want to. Retire, take off, and go to Alaska for six weeks, and be a missionary for the summer. Who knows? Uh, but if you're locked in and you're the only teacher, and oh, if I don't teach, I'm, my class is going to fall apart. You know. But uh, teach. Find an assistant teacher in the class. New classes reach new people. New classes reach new people. Uh, New classes grow faster than established classes. Started several new classes when I was in church in, in Paducah. Uh, one time I asked a guy named Donnie Woods, Donnie and Vicky. He was a retired state policeman. He uh, said, man, you guys need to start a new class. He said, well, I've been teaching 12th grade boys for 15 years. I said, yeah, but you need to start a class your age. They prayed about it and said, okay. I said, who, they said, who, who do I, who's going to be in my class? I said, whoever you get. Whoever you want to be in your class, you enlist them. Oh, okay. Well, they were the couple that knew everybody. <clears throat> he was the number one state policeman in West Kentucky for years. Bodybuilder. Everybody loved Donnie Woods. And... Uh, First Sunday, first Sunday, they had 20 people there. Started a new class with 20 people, me and Vicky. And about six or eight of them have been folks that had, hadn't been to church in 20 years. But they were friends of Donnie and Vicky. Okay? <coughs> Two guys hadn't been to church in 30 years. And this guy, one guy's wife, she had been after him to come to church, you know, for 20, 25 years. And he just, nah, nah, nah. This guy was good friends with Donnie. They love horses and farm stuff and that kind of stuff. So Donnie invites this guy to come to his class. And guess what? He shows up that first Sunday morning. And his wife didn't know about it. Thank you. His wife didn't know about it. She's over in a ladies' class, you know. Class is going on, and somebody comes running in and grabs the lace. Your husband's in Donnie Woods' class this morning. And she about faints. She about faints. She tears up. She is bawling. She said, I can't believe this. I can't believe my, my husband isn't. He had been in church in 30 years. She jumps up and runs out of class and runs up to Donnie and Vicky's classroom and just bear hugs her husband and sits there and the rest of the morning in Sunday school class with her husband who hadn't been in church in 30 years. Well, that doesn't happen every new class you start, but it did with them. It did with them. So new classes, reach new people. New classes <coughs> grow faster than established classes. Uh, new classes are easier for newcomers to penetrate, as I already talked about earlier. New classes engage more people in Leadership, and you look at Luke 2, 10 to, and it talks about that. New classes engage more people in leadership. Now, these two guys that hadn't been in church in 20, 30 years start coming to Donnie's class. They start doing all kinds of mission projects. Their class started, I mean, they, you know, went to East Kentucky on a uh, rehab or a building a house, whatever. that they, you'll find new leaders in new classes. Okay. Sunday morning 
Easter comes and you've got 30 first time visitors. And you could have you could have 50. Let's say you've got 30 first time guests this coming Easter Sunday on April 21. What are those guests asking as they walk in the church, as they sit down on the pew, and as they begin to be a part of this church that day? Two questions most every first time guest is asking. Any idea? Do you care? You think they're asking that? So too. What's the other question they're asking? Are you real? <laughs> 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 we do have the smart Y'all can read too, can't you? <laughs> yeah, they're asking these two questions, folks. Do you care? And they find out that just by walking down the hallway. <coughs> Are you real? And they can tell that from the worship service, from the preaching, from the you know people at the door, people in the parking lot. Uh, did my friend invite me to go to lunch, mm -hmm. or did he just say, "Hey, come sit with me on this pew"? You know, growing, healthy churches <coughs> do what non-growing churches won't do. Okay? Got to go second mile, second step. And as you understand new people coming to the church, ask, do you care about me? Uh, and are you real? And, and we've been around people that are kind of fake, kind of plastic, you know, whatever. Uh, and for the most part, we don't like to be around those kind of we like to be around genuine people. You know, but, uh, whatever. Okay. Questions, thoughts. I'll have to wrap up here, for folks. You were yeah. talking about the um, team members. Like for our class, I help out with the college and career, and we don't have our numbers kind of fluctuate. Sure. We're kind of you know in and out. But um, we have more kids when they're home, you know, during college or whatever. But right. Um, if you had to establish the team members, since like today we only have four people, so if you would establish the team members, who would you say are non-negotiables since our group is kind of small? For a college and career class, non-negotiables, one would be an assistant teacher, okay. and number two would be a party person. Right. Okay. You get two people to help you with that, uh, and I'm not I may even put the party person first <laughs> with college and career. Yeah. And the college and career, for sure, man, you want to have a party during Christmas. <laughs> you want to have a party first of June when they all get home. Maybe even August before they leave. Uh, just uh, so so that whenever they do come home, uh, hey man, I'm excited. We have a great party at Christmas. Well, let's let's all get back together again. Uh, trying to build those godly memories. Toughest group uh, to minister to and to uh, have Sunday school for is college and career singles. It really is. Tip my hat to you. Okay? Other questions? Great question. Okay. Real quick, real quick, I want you to think of one thing, the most important thing you got from being here today. I want you to give me a phrase or a sentence. No preaching. You've already heard the preacher. You've already heard me teach. One word or a phrase. The most important thing I got from being here in this session today. Okay, we'll start right here. We'll come around the room. And then we'll around the table, okay? Uh, relationship. Relationship. Yeah. Connect. <clears throat> Invite. Invite. Yeah. Gift. Gifts. Gifts. Great. Fellowship. Fellowship, yes. Discover. Discover. Um, 
outreach evangelizing. Evangelize. <coughs> Discover. Oh, you said service. Service. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, my ears are come on. <coughs> yes. Love. Love. Party. Party. <laughs> there you go. Put him in charge of the party. Uh, open relationship with a good, loving kindness. Wonderful. Changing up the different uh, the teaching format. Don't yeah. keep it the same because it just creative. Teach, change it up. Yes. Finding an assistant. <laughs> Finding an assistant. <laughs> yeah, amen. I like party. Party. <laughs> Back there. Connect. Connect. Service. Service. Encouragement. Encouragement. Yes. Growing. Growing. Sure. Serve. Serve. Learning. Learning. Encouragement. Encouragement. Growing classes, for sure. Growing classes, okay. <laughs> Create an, an assistant teacher. Assistant teacher. Teach the truth of the gospel. Okay, the truth of the gospel. Caregiver. Caregivers, okay, good. Enlisting. Make it interesting. Enlisting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> My wife says I don't listen either. <laughs> Make it real. Make it real. Effective learning and sharing. Amen. Encouraged to find assistant teachers. <laughs> assistant teacher, yes. Everybody, please do that. I'm going to come back in six months. I'm going to ask you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people are not looking for friendly churches. They're <laughs> looking for friends. Whoa, what a truth. Authentic relationships. Authentic. More than two times. More than two times. More than, ask more than two times. Okay. Don't leave anybody out. Okay. Folks, y'all have been awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to hearing from you come Easter and even between now and then. Work on those assistant teachers. Work on building a team around you. And take care of yourself as a teacher. Let's pray. Oh, thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so awesome. We love you. We praise you. And Lord, it's such an honor to be here today with these wonderful people. Pray that you would bless them. Bless this church. Uh, Lord, bless the pastor and the staff. Lord, may uh, you continue to just do great and wonderful things through this church, through this body. We pray for each teacher. Pray you would bless them. Help them to find an assistant teacher. Lord, help them to take care of their walk with you. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and the glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.